الرحيم ربي اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقه قولي I welcome you all on this prestigious event of IEP Institution of Engineers Pakistan Saudi Arabia chapter Eastern Province sub center I am Muhammad Abrar Shami working in Saudi electricity company as engineering specialist and my specialty in Saudi electricity company are telecom engineering substation automation and smart grid I am a toastmaster also and got the Com competent communication award and the competent leadership award from toastmaster international california and honored to be the master of ceremony for today's event so let us begin the event formally with the recitation of holy quran may i request engineer sohail ahmed to please come on the stage and recite the verses from the holy quran engineer sohail ahmed about new technologies for multifaceted engineering activities networking and assisting engineering graduates for their career development is a passion of IEP SAC thank you very much for listening i'll just briefly inform you about today's agenda it will be a short uh, event but after uh, the opening remarks and the introduction of the speaker the presentation of the speaker will take about 45 minutes and for your uh, benefit the question answer session will be held after the presentation the question slips will be distributed by the council members so you can fill up the slips hand over to the council members and inshallah we will try to address all the questions but if there is a shortage of time we will try to select some of the questions and then there will be lucky draw <coughs> of course uh, before the lucky draw there will be a vote of thanks for our from our beloved engineer from chairman engineer rizwan ahmed and then the refreshment will be served at the end most probably around 4:35 so to introduce uh, today's uh, speaker for me 
he is a role model. He is a smiling face personality. Mr. Tariq bin Zafar Al Husseini is a project management engineering system consultant. Project management, lean management, risk management by utilizing process improvement techniques such as Lean Six Sigma, JIT, and FMEA are some of his strengths. He is IRCA slash ASQ accredited lead auditor in the field of quality almost all <coughs> management systems. He is among the first lead trainers in the GCC countries who has been accredited by CQI IRCA UK. By profession, Mr. Tariq is a mechanical engineer from NED University of Engineering and Technology, Karachi, Pakistan. His sector expertise are in the field of oil and gas, energy and renewable energy research, development, innovation and improvements. He is certified to many standards of American Petroleum Institute, American Welding Society, NEBB, and British Gas. He is a member of ASME, AWS, ASHRAI, ASHRAI, ASTM, CQI, NACE, ASNT, ASQ, IEP, Institution of Engineers, Pakistan, Canada, Australia, UK. There are so many terminologies I have given. Hopefully, he will explain. So he is so learned, mashallah. So please join hands together to welcome Tariq bin Zafar Al Husseini to present his presentation. Nice to see such a nice gathering at this time of the day and on Saturday. Shami, thank you very much for introducing me with such a nice words and explaining my qualification. I don't think I'm that qualified, but well, if you say so, you people can change. Our seminar today is about NHRL, SRL, and what is new in quality management. ISO 9001-2008, you, all of you are less familiar with. What today we are going to talk about is what are the changes in ISO 9001 in the new edition of 2015 and what is the reason why changes have been made and what are the improvements because of that. I sometimes explain this thing, it's not a good way of talking about the society of ISO 9000. But in 1945, after the Second World War, one German guy, he entered into Washington and he introduced a Ponzi scheme. And he was telling everybody that I can make your money double. If you give me 100,000, within a short period of time, I will make it double. <laughs> this ISO 9000 and quality management system are almost something like a Ponzi scheme because they keep on changing it and the reason of changing is definitely business and business and business. When we are going to change 2008 to 2015, you don't understand a billions of dollars will be exchanged here and there. Everybody will make money, the auditors, the consultants, and who will be the loser companies. <laughs> Let me start with, the, with one of the group, that Milton Friedman, 1974 novelist, in economics, and you see what he's saying. Business of a business is business. So today we are going to talk about business and business and business. And he says, government never learned, only people. So the message is very clear. Owners never learn. It is the poor managers who learn. So this ISO 9000, to be honest, is not for the owners, 
Yes. For the poor managers to read it, implement it, monitor and read it. It starts with the gurus, you know, just an introduction about the quality gurus, Dr. David, PDCA cycle, PDSA cycle, William Crossbay, I've put a diamond. He came up with the idea of zero defect. That was the first concept given in the quality, zero defect. And then we have Dr. William Shivert, who, who was the leader, who came up with an idea of PDCA cycle. Dr. Ishikawa, fishbone diagram, and Dr. Duran, who introduced a statistical quality control. Adam Fabengam, who introduced the total quality con control concept. And Nagachi Taguchi, who came up with the concept of loss function. So these were the gurus who are mainly responsible for the development of ISO 9000, which is in this shape today of the quality. What is an extra L? <coughs> there was a guide 83 before that. An extra SL is the new version of the guide 83 of ISO 9000. And what was written in the guide 83 was how to correlate, coordinate, and <coughs> integrate all the ISO, ISO standards. There are more than 9,500 ISO standards at this moment, and every day they are increasing. Now, these standards are written by technical committees. Somehow, these technical committees were working independently, without communicating, without coordinating with each other. And you know, as a result, everybody was writing the standard the way the committee wants to. And we, as a consultant, were facing a lot of difficulties when the systems are being integrated. Like a company who has ISO 9001 and 14001 and they want to integrate, it was very difficult because of the description, because of the clauses, it was, it was really a challenge to integrate them. And these days, the concept of integrated management system is on the rise, which led to I, this committee think about how to improve the system so that we can easily integrate and an extra SL is based on integration of the system. It has a high level structure. It is written for the technical committees and it has common technology. It has 10 clauses and three annexures and it has identical core text. This is what makes now all the standards almost same. Remember looking to the these pictures you must have seen who are involved in quality management system for ISO 9001, 14001, 15001, 20001. They had different structures and different classifications. So this, this was the need of the time to join together and make one type of a system. So this is what an system <laughs> is. Now it is divided into 10 clauses. And if you look into it, it is exactly following the pattern of <coughs> do, check, and add. If you look into clause one to six, they're all planning clauses. So that's called in the P category, operations. When you're doing it, that's do. Performance evaluation is check, and improvement is act. So it's basically now 100% in compliance with the PDCA side. What is new in it? If you look into it, clause four, context of the organization. This is something new, which they have added into the system. Then they have introduced the risk-based concept, and they have also introduced the core competency evaluation and talent management. These are the three things which have been added to the new stack. So what I will try to explain in an easy and nice way how these three things have been incorporated into the ISO 9001-2015. The word context itself is a very, very difficult word. If you look into the dictionary, you will find many, many meanings, and it confuses you again and again. So just keep in mind, when we are talking about the context, we are saying the background, the existence of the organization. are the new 
clauses which have been added into the new ISO 9001 2015. Clause 4, 4.1, 4.2, 4.3, 4.4, and they all deal with the context of the organization. So what, what comes to your mind when we say context of the organization? Okay. Immediately we think about mission, vision, values, all those things starts coming into our mind, and that's that's the, that's how the context of the organizations are developed. And also, in the previous 2008 version, we were only talking about the customer. Here in 2015, we have extended it to the interested parties. So who are the interested parties? We start with the customer, then the owners, the leaders, the managers, the suppliers, the society, and the community. So in the new 2015, we don't have to consider only to the customer. We have to look into the requirements of the interested parties as well. Strategic management is now the core issue of 2015. Previously, in 2008, auditing of the system was very, very simple. The auditors were coming to the organization and asking you, where is your quality manual? Where is your procedure manual? Just show us your six procedure and show your records, and that's you get the certificate. It was very, very easy for the auditors and for the organization to develop 2008 standard and to get it certified. It is a challenge now. It's a challenge. It's no more that, that the auditor will come and ask you about that. Because in the new 2015 standard, we are not talking about quality manual. We are not talking about quality management system representative. Right? All those things have gone. This, the procedures have been reduced from six to five. The records, almost 17 records you have to maintain. So these are the, the there is the challenge now. The challenge is how you are going to integrate your quality management system with your business. What was happening before? The quality department was used to be a department sitting aside and all the problems were thrown to the quality department and they say it's your job, you do it. Business people and quality people were almost not talking to each other. They said we are doing the business, let us do the business, you do your quality. That concept has gone, has changed. Now you have to integrate your quality management with the business management. So if you really don't know what is business management, it will not be possible for you to, to develop this quality management system and to audit and get it certified. The concept of business management has to come first now. Just try to explain you what, what we are talking about. We are talking about a strategy development. And what is a strategy? It's again a very difficult concept to explain. In the strategy, what you have to do, you have to come up with some intelligent decision to develop your strategy. And <coughs> once you have formulated the strategy, you have to develop your strategy as well. And what is a strategy? This is how the easiest possible definition of the strategy, which I have tried to put it in, in pieces, is a long-term planning. So we are not talking any more short-term plan. It's all the quality management system for 9001, 2015 is a long-term plan. It's not a, no more a short-term plan. It has to be based on very intelligent decisions. What your organization wants to do, where they want to do, where they will be in 10 years, what will be their business, what will be their objectives, and how they are going to achieve their objectives. Everything has to be decided before the start of the development of the system. It sets, the strategy basically sets the direction and the scope. Direction is where you want to go and the scope what objective <coughs> you want to achieve. So now the quality objectives have to go and integrate with the, manage, with the business objective. If you don't integrate them, you will not be able to do, work out the context of the organization. Why we do the strategy? Because we have to achieve 
a competitive edge over all, all our competitors. And how can we do it? We have to utilize our resources, and not only resources, their competence, their core competence. We have to exploit that, and we have to keep into consideration what are the requirements of the interested party. So it's a cycle, strategy is a cycle, where which is based on decisions, intelligent decisions, where you want to go and how you will reach there, and how you will know that you have reached there. And whether the people in the system, in the society, are happy with you or not. That's the, that's the new rule of the ISO 9000 2015. Whenever we talk about the strategy, GSW word, we cannot get out of it. Johnson, Schultz, and Whittington, these are the three strategies, world famous. If you look into it, they have created a difference in the world. Just explaining the strategy and writing on books, many books on the strategy. Their famous book is Exploring the Strategy and Fundamentals of the Strategy. What they have come up with the idea, they say start developing a strategy is not a linear function. It is in the shape of a triangle. And if you want to start developing your strategy, you can start from any of the three. It's not a linear function. Analysis, implementation, and what choices you have. This is the loose triangle where you have to start basing your strategy. Strategic analysis. If you want to start with the strategic analysis, the first thing you have to do is SWOT analysis to understand what are your threats and opportunities and weaknesses and strengths. First thing you have to start with, so now when you are developing the new 2015 standard, you have to start with the SWOT analysis to develop, to understand exactly what are your weaknesses, strengths, opportunities, and threats. We were doing it in the business, now we have to do it in the quality management as well. You also have to do the market research. What type of a product you want to introduce into the market, what type of a market segment you are going to work, and what type of a competitors you are going to face in the market. You have to do the customer analysis. Who are your customers? Where are they and what are their expectations? These are the things which were missing in the 2008 standard. Now we have to do it in 2015. McKenzie 7S, this is one of the strategy which people will be using to develop the strategies if they want to establish this strategy. Quarter five force, this analysis you have to do to check your competitors. How your competitors are there, how the, what is their product, how they compete with you, and what your suppliers are doing, what the customer, because you are in between the supplier and the customer. The suppliers are trying to increase their price, and your customers want to reduce your price. And then you have competitors which are, again, asking you to reduce or make your price competitive. So you are somewhere in between, and you have to do this type of analysis if you really want to develop a good management system. The strategic choice will be for you will be competitive strategy, and what type of a growth you are looking, and what will be the what is your direction of growth, and how you are going to close the gaps. Because here, what you are doing is you are calculating the gaps, or you are doing the gap analysis over here how you're going to close the gaps. And then strategic implementation will be when you have developed your plan, you have to implement your plan, you have to develop the budgets, you have to start monitoring and measuring, and you have to develop your KPIs to make sure that you're in the right direction. That, that was the business, the clause four. The clause four talks about the context of the organization, and in the context of the organization, as an auditor or as a system developer, you have to understand that you have to do a strategic analysis, and the auditors will come and will start asking you about your strategies, about your strategic plans, and your approach, and the methods you are using for the strategic analysis.
to be prepared for that in the new 2015, it's, it's a bigger challenge than what it was in 2008. And then the new clause which is added to 2015 is the knowledge, organizational knowledge. What is organizational knowledge is the competence. And what is competence? If you are doing a job and you are not making any mistake, you are a competent person. And how you become a competent? You become competent based on your education, qualifications, your skills, your training that make you competent. And the other thing which makes you competent is your time management and your risk management. So this is what the new clause which has been added is now talking about the core competence of the organization. What type of an organization it is and what is the competence level. These two, there are two gurus in this direction who came up with the idea of core competence. Late Kambatur, he was one of the professor from Harvard University Business School and from University of Michigan. He came up with the concept of the core competence and his colleague, Gary Hamill, both of them, they have worked together to work out the corporation's competence. And this is how you look into the core competence. The core competence is your roots. The trunk is your major core product, and your leaves and your flowers are your end products. So where we have to come, where we have to concentrate more is really the root of the tree, where the competence of the organization is there. Very simple, core competence is collective learning. You have to look, now when you're going to calculate or to evaluate the core competence, what you have to do? You have to check the organization, what type of a collective learning is going on there? What type of a collective skills they are utilizing? And how they are communicating and doing their business? And how they are integrating their skills into the technology? and culture base of the organization. These are the new challenges which you are being, we are being faced as a consultant and as an auditor to check and audit the organization, the core competence. Hello. Yes. This, this makes the difference, the assets and the core competence. Your other assets, your physical assets, assets deteriorate, but your core competence grow all the time. So what is the challenge? The challenge is how to maintain the talent. How to maintain the talent? You have a workforce who has all the skills, all the capabilities, and how can you make them happy? So the auditors now will come and will start asking you questions. And you have to come up with a process how you are going to maintain your talent. If you fail to maintain your talent, the organization will go. So now the major emphasis of 2015 is on work competence of the organization. How they are maintaining it, how they are developing it, and how they can sure how they can show us at, as being auditor that they have the core competence and they are maintaining the talent. The third major change is the risk-based approach. What is risk-based approach? That you have to calculate the risk in every activity, whatsoever you are doing it for in management. All your activities have to be risk-based. You have to calculate the risk. And what is risk? Risk is a composite function. The failure times the consequences. So it's a composite thing. Something will fail, and because of the failure, you will have the consequences. The consequences can be positive. Consequences can be negative as well. So what we are talking about is to control the negative consequences once the failure takes place. This is basic definition of process approach. 
and plan to set plan to check that which is this standard is based on this risk based planning starts with the word B. The process owner they have to take the responsibility for planning the processes and it has to be risk based. Once the plan is done, the resources <coughs> of the organization will start doing. That's the key part of it. And once the product or the service is out, it has to be checked. Once you are checking, there is every possibility that your product may not be to the requirement. So it has to go back to your planning department to evaluate why it happened but they will start doing the root cause analysis. Once the product has gone to the customer, immediately you will get a feedback from the customer whether he is accepting your product or not. There could be a positive feedback and there could be a negative feedback for you. And once the product is accepted and is happy, now you have to think about from the beginning what information he had given to you before you start making your product. So the feed, the feed forward will start coming to you, which is before the start of your plan. And now you have to connect it to your business plan. These, all these things have to be connected. This plan, which is for your quality management or your process, it has to be integrated your business with your business plan. Also, you have to keep into your mind all the regulatory and statutory requirements. You also have to keep in your mind your requirements, other requirements of the process. What are the other requirements of the process? Are the international standard, are the production standards which you have to apply, your contract requirements. These are other requirements that you have to integrate into your plan or your process. Now once the business plan has been integrated into your planning and your product is out, you can compare and that will give you the effectiveness of your system. That will tell you how effective is your system and that is the first KPI which has been formulated here in this plan. The second will be, if you look into here, the resource plan and the resource used during the doing. There could be lapses or you may not be utilizing your resources as effectively as you plan. There comes your efficiency. How quickly you make it and how many mistakes you do it. Here is the concept of lean management and other management systems to control the efficiency of the processes. So we have another KPI over there. And then once a non-conforming product is going back, that's another non-KPI, and the customer satisfaction is your another KPI. So if you look into it, in the process approach, what you have really done, you have done the planning, you have integrated your planning with your business plan, and you're calculating your customer satisfaction, you're calculating the efficiency of your organization, and you're calculating the effectiveness of your organization. Three things we have to keep in mind, effectiveness, efficiency, and the customer satisfaction. Three things the system is not depending on. You have to plan your KPI on this process approach. In the previous 2008, we were not talking about the management of change. When we are talking about the management of change, actually what we are talking about, which changes we are talking about. You know, this is a changing world, it's a dynamic world. The environment, business environment are changing. You must be hearing about mergers and acquisitions. So whenever there is a merger and acquisition, you have to do a risk plan. What, is, what will be the effect of the merger and what will be the effect of the acquisition? Also, you have so many corrective and preventive actions going on in your organization which lead to changes in your procedures. 
So any change to your procedure falls under management of change. Customer satisfaction, your audit results, all may lead to change in your procedures and your system. And you have to do a risk based you have to do a risk management. And once you have done the risk management, you know what are the risks, and you have to apply the methods to control, which we call a contingency plan. Like we, when we design a system, in this, in this room there could be a possibility of fire. So what would be the risk management? How severe the fire will be? How much damage this fire will cause? And contingency plans will be how to control the fire sprinkler system or firefighting, whatever. Similarly, in the whole quality management system, you have to look into what changes are coming. Changes are coming from the suppliers. Changes are coming from the customer requirements. Changes are coming from the corrective action. And changes are coming due to the political environment, economic environment, social environment, legal environment, and demographic changes. All are asking you to do a management of change, and this was not really there in 2008. These are the replacements of 2015 from 2008. Control of documents. We were using too much this word, document control and record control. The word they have changed. Instead of document control and record, they have combined it together and they are calling it as documented information. So in previous standard, we were looking, in, looking into this, the, proceed, uh, the records to be maintained and documents to be maintained. In this, in this standard, we are calling documents to be maintained and documents to be retained. Otherwise, it's the same, no change. Only words have changed. Top management, the word top management has changed to leaders. The clause, clause 5 of 2008, which was management clause, is now changed to leadership clause. What is the change? They have removed, they have not really included management representative. Management representative clause has gone. What does it mean? Do we fire our management representatives? No. Which the new standard is telling you, we were, we were talking this that quality is everybody's business. Quality is everybody's business. Now, this, now it is practically coming to you that we do not need a management representative to apply or to apply the quality management principles. Everybody, the whole organization has to apply it. The word resources. Clause 6 of 2008, which was resources, human resources, infrastructure, work environment, now they are calling it support. No change. Exactly same, only the wording has changed, and it has changed to support clause. Management review clause in 5.6 have moved to performance clause, which was the right place for it. Control of monitoring and measuring equipment. They were in product realization in 2008. They have shifted it to the support clause because these equipments are used as a support. Product realization clause in 2008. They have renamed it and they are calling it as operation, which is a better name for that clause. Design verification and design validation clause have been merged under one clause which is design control. Customer property is replaced with property belonging to customer. Purchasing clause, this is the major change. Purchasing clause is now replaced with control of externally provided processes or product. So we are not calling purchasing, we are calling externally provided product or services. In externally provided services, Mainly we talk about two things. One is the subcontract and the suborders. Subcontract is, is the clause is used when the organization has the capability to do 
do the job, but because of overloading, they want to suck, they, they want to get away with part of it to another organization. Suborders are those where the organization do not have the capability to produce that. So both those things have been converted into this clause, which is externally provided services. Clause 8.2.4, monitoring and measurement of product is replaced with Clause 8.6, which is re release of product, which is a better name and better description. 9000-2000 Clause 8 is replaced with Clause 9, with new description, performance evaluation. And the improvement part, which was part of Clause 8, they have divided it into two parts. Now they have to make it an improvement part. So what they have done, they have really made it a PDCA cycle, where you, you will start with the context, class four, then resources, and then leaders, and then operations, and then performance analysis, and then improvement. So you're back to a full PDCA cycle. If you look into it, there are no major changes, no major changes in the standard of 2008. Only the concept is changing. Now they want to integrate the quality management system into business management system. They want to change the thinking from normal thinking to risk-based thinking, and they want to concentrate on the root, on the, the competence of the organization, the core competence of the organization. These are the three major areas which have really changed the culture of ISO 9000 2015. It's more a business model as compared to quality model, or rather an integrated quality business model. So there are not many changes, but challenges have increased. The challenge is for the quality people who, are, who will be involved in managing the system, in developing the system, and especially the auditors who will come and do the audit of the quality management system. So thank you very much. This is this was what all about all changes in the quality management system. You don't have to worry about there is not a major change. It's not a major change. But you have to think broad and you have to think on business. Do not concentrate only on quality. Think big, think about the business, think about the strategy. Think about the strategic planning. Think about the risk management. This is the new world order for quality management system. Thank you. So thank you very much, uh, Engineer Tarbin Zafar. So now we may we start the question answer session. Okay. So please, uh, yeah. If the question slips uh, have been filled, uh, then I think uh, we can start. Or otherwise. Uh, we can give it to the, yeah, to start. Question slips, uh, I think we just want to say something else. What was the logic behind it? Why was it done? Basically, the, the concept in 2008 was very confusing. Let's, let's take, take a look. What comes to your mind when you talk about a document? What comes to your mind when we say, what is a document? Can you just describe what is a document? You document, you describe whatever uh, you do the process or whatever the exchange of views, you put it on in writing, that is document. Or whatever the process or whatever you do, the act. Any, the anybody activity. can volunteer. Yes, yes. Paper. Walk in here. Piece of information. Document is information as a, as a Agreement between what you do or what you how you do the agreement between uh, between yourself or whatever that you call name of any agreement is document. Maybe the uh, procedures and forms. <laughs> Anybody else? Leading <laughs> tree. Ideas and thoughts. All the answers are correct. None of the answer is wrong. But if you look into it, what we are talking about. We are talking about the information. So what information always travel from A to B, from one per place to another place, or one person to another person. 
how these information travel, there has to be a media. It could, it could be through a document. It's not really a document. It could be voice, like I'm communicating with you, and I have given you information through this. This could be a video, it could be an audio. It could be an international language. So what is the definition of a document is the media through which information transfer. That is the definition of a document. So the document and record, how you come, how you will define the record? What is the record? Record means you fix everything. It is this. Okay, just give me any name of any record. Yes, uh, documents normally is subjected to revision and records will not be subjected to revision. Can you just name my, any record? Yeah, my degree is in the British. Your degree is, what is your degree? Reference. What is your degree? What's, what's your qualification? Proof. What is your degree? Proof. Yeah. yeah, I am just not saying. I say you are not. You are not an engineer. How can you prove that you are an engineer? You will show me the degree. What is this degree? Degree? Record is the evidence. Record is the evidence. So it's a special type of a document. Of course, but sometimes it's it may. Your degree is not going to change, we know, but some some records may change. Now it's a concept that records are concept. It's okay, but you can take it as it is. But what I'm trying to say, in 2008, a clear distinction was not there between documents and records. Now in 2008, they say it is information. That information, which you think is very important for the organization, you are going to maintain. So it becomes a record. And any information which you don't want to maintain, it's a document, like your procedures, like all other things. But like a contract, a purchase order, you have to maintain it. So it is a record. Your degree, your training records, they are a special type of documents which you have to maintain. That's why they have used the word maintain. Any other questions? Yes, I Okay, uh, around eight or ten uh, words you have explained that those words have been replaced with new words. Now, uh, we could not understand that the old words were either misguiding us or not reaching to the co correct conclusion where the new words give us an exact concept. That we need to understand. Let, let's see, the first change is in the document which we have already talked about. Records and documents are converted into documented information. The second change is management. They, in 2008, we were talking about top management. So what is top management? The owners, the general managers. And what is the job of the general, board, general managers and the top management? They come up with plans. They are, these are the people who develop the strategies. Those who come up with the vision, mission, value, strategies. But they only give you a direction and they tell you what to do. But who is writing? Who is doing actually? is the managers. So they are the directors. And then there are people under them who actually execute the strategy. Those who execute, those, those who achieve the objective. So we have directors. The directors are only giving you direction. So who gives you the direction? That is leaders. So they have changed the word top management to leaders. Like this plus this resources. Resources, they have, been, they have changed it to support. Why they have changed it to support? Because in the quality management system, you need support. Support is coming from the resources. What is your support to execute your quality management system? The human resources. The infrastructure, equipment, material, they're all supporting you. Training. So that's why instead of writing resources, they're calling them as support. So these are the major changes. Then the, if you look into the clause 8 of 2008, the clause 8 was major, measurement, 
analysis and improvement. Three things were combined together in one clause. So what they have done is they have broken it down, measurement and analysis. Why you do measurement analysis? To check the performance. So they have renamed it. Instead of writing monitoring measurement, they say performance analysis. And improvement they have taken into another clause. The one thing which you people, I, I miss really explaining you, that one clause is gone. Another clause is gone, which is preventive actions. The standard 2015 is not really talking about preventive action. So where is the preventive action gone now? In 2015. 2015, I explained to you that they are talking about risk-based process approach. So when you are doing the risk management, what actually you are doing? You are calculating. When you are calculating the risk, you have to do the contingency plan. What are the contingency plans? You have preventive action. So preventive action has been moved from there, and it is merged into risk management. So you are trying to say that the word has been changed to give a wider, a wider concept in a wider spectrum. Yes. I think it's business. Wider spectrum. Yes. They, the most most important is to understand the context of the organization. That is that is the challenge now. Yeah. What is the time frame we are looking for to adopt this new system? Three years. You still can work with for next three years with 2008. In that period, you have to convert yourself to the uh, Sir, uh, all the concepts which we have shared today, this based thing strategic planning, SOD analysis, FME, whatever that is. Being an auditor, I just wanted to know from you that if I don't have any concept or any background regarding business management, project management, will it justify my doing an audit for another organization? We will immediately disqualify you. Yes. So <laughs> how, how, how you are going to uh, take this kind of adaptation? Like uh, you said, there is there is no regulatory body <coughs> in this world right now. There is no regulatory body who is regulating the qualification of the auditors. There's no. IRCA is not a regulatory body. It's only a register. You know it. Now, it's going to be a big challenge for those people who are going to be auditors like you. If you do not have the background of the business, you cannot do the audit of class four. And if you are not a risk manager, you will not be able to do to evaluate or audit the risk plan. So uh, if you are going to be an auditor, you have to you have to go take some courses about the risk management, about the about the business management, especially how to develop a strategy and how to implement a strategy and how to audit a strategic plan. These things, but the concept of vision, mission, values was already there, it was already there. But it was not really very subjective. It was not very subjective. Now it is subjective as well as very, very objective. You have to learn all these things before you really do a good audit. 2015 audits are going to be very, very difficult. Very different. Sir, I think uh, Engineer Tariq bin Zafar have uh, given such an interesting and uh, professionally conducted presentation that there are a lot of questions. So this is normally we distribute the slips, but since uh, seeing the, the interest and the enthusiasm of the audience, we'll continue this interactive section session for the next five to ten minutes. MR is out of question now out of picture, I would say. But how this practically would happen, you know, on, you know, I mean, since transition is going to come, so who is going, going to apply this? And then once the auditor is coming, then who is going to entertain him? So there are a lot much, you know, interface and communication of course is there. If you look into, if you look into the standard, it has not included this class. But if the standard is not saying that you terminate your, it's not saying, to get rid of it, he's not saying. You know, we are saying that quality is everybody's business. Are we talking this 
this phrase for a very long time or not. Why we were not able to do a good quality management? Because we formulated a quality management department and gave every shit on it. And nobody is looking into this, what they are doing, what resources they have. It's the quality department you do and manage the quality. So this is this myth they want to break. They want everybody to get involved. Of course, somebody will be there who will take care of the quality. Maybe it's not the name management representative, but there will be people who will take care or take the responsibility to manage the quality management system. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Engineer Mohammed Zubaydi from Jordan. Uh, I'd like to thank you for uh, the beautiful and uh, very important uh, lectures that you have uh, offered us. And I'd like to ask you, please, uh, uh, you have uh, talked about the business case, the uh, uh, visibility study, and uh, the market study, which we used to make uh, at a certain time before the project is initiated. And after that, some of the companies are not developing uh, these uh, three studies, which will be confused with the factors you have said. Therefore, I think uh, you are uh, saying that these three uh, factors should be updated uh, through the uh, uh, project uh, cycles, or uh, can you uh, offer us uh, a bit about it, please? Thank you. When you are doing the business management, you start from where? Right? And you have a target to reach, which is the mission accomplished. So in between is your strategy, how to reach there. That is a stra that's the definition of strategy. That you have certain objectives to achieve, and how to achieve is your strategy. You can go this way, this way, any matter. Now in between the process, are you not going to monitor that you are on, on the track? Every, that's why we have KPIs, that's why we have monitoring and measurement to make sure that the path which you have adopted to reach to your destination is correctly, is correct and you are following it. And if you are not following it, then it means you have to do the risk analysis why you are not doing it and what will be the consequence if you don't reach to your destination. So this is a continuous process, PDCA, PDCA, PDCA. You have to keep on doing it. So the auditors can, any stage, at every stage, can ask these type of questions. Whether <coughs> your business plan is on track or the business plan is not on track. Because your quality objectives are now integrated with the business objectives. Now they are together. Before, you know, they were, we were not talking about the business-related objectives. Now we are talking business-related quality objectives. Whether the mission is accomplished or not, vision is accomplished or not, values are there. That's why I showed you the, the McKay's 7S model here. At any organization, if you are now, the auditors have to follow it. First of all, they have to check the strategy of the company. What is your strategy? Then they have to check what type of an organizational structure they are following. Is it a soil or type or a matrix type or what type of an organization it is? What structure they have? Then he has to check the system. What systems they have? Risk management, quality management, procurement, all those systems which are in the organization, they have to keep it. Then they have to check this stuff, what type of a capable, qualified staff they have, and what skills they have, and what is the style of the management, which type of a management it is. Now, this is this is the part of the clause for context of the organization, which this concept is there for, for years, for the business people. All those who have the MBA degree, they must have studied this. They must have studied this McKay Savannah's model seven ways to do the strategy. Now the quality management people, they also have to do it. Because if they don't know how they are going to manage the quality. Before you were just blind, you were not looking into the business. You were only talking about the quality. Now you are going to a broader side. Integration. 
sorry, uh, continuation of the same question. Suppose that we have now old system, okay, 2008. We have the quality department and we have our business running separately. Now I want to integrate. How to start and how to be new integrate? Integrations are a big word. How to make this integration smoothly and to change the only mentality? One, only one word. Only one word. Training. 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 Training and training and training and training. That's all. And let the business people talk to the quality people, the owners. Why we? Why in Saudi Arabia? I'm oh, sorry. I should not say. Why in this part of the world? the quality is not really achieving the goals. Why? Nobody cares. No, this is a very important question. Nobody cares. Why? We talk, we go to the classes, we learn, we apply the system, even then it's, the results are not there. Why? There is only one, one answer to all, everything. You have too much profit margins in your contracts. If you're pr the profit margin in this part of the world is 50%, 60%, 70%, and sometimes more than 100%. If that type of juice is available with you, who will care about the quality? Who will care about the quality? Even if you lose it, forget about it. Right? That is the attitude. The second reason, second reason is these interested parties, the most important interested party is the owners. How many owners are competitive? How many owners are qualified? The owners have only one and one objective, that he want to make 30% profit, 40%, 50%. Does he have any other objective? So if the objective is this, how we talk about quality? And we know when we have that much fat available in shape of a profit, who cares about it? That's one of the reasons why the quality is not flourishing. And in, in in, if you go to North America or Europe, the profit margins are from 5 to 7% maximum. A little mistake you make, you're gone. The businesses go like this. Have you seen any organization failing in this part of the world? No. Nobody's failing. Why they are not failing? Nobody cares about their no, They have fat available. They have fat available. I, my, my own company, which I worked for, we took a project and we did this project two times. We, we did that project two times. Mr. Ismuth is here and he knows about it. We did it two times because we had no concept of quality. We had no concept of quality. We screwed up that project like anything. We finished that project in nine years. And as a result, the company ultimately vanished. Okay. So this is, this is what the quality can help you and quality can destroy you. But again, you have to understand, the, I purposely made this slide for you people. The owners, they are only thinking about business and business and business and business. They don't talk about CSR. They don't believe in corporate social responsibility. They don't believe about the welfare of the workers. They don't believe about suppliers. They don't believe about any society or community. They're only interested in their business and their profits. And they don't want to learn. Second problem is they don't want to learn. Most of the time we have seen the project is realized, is taken, and the owners tell you, okay, you take this project, they come to the manager say, take this project and give me this much money and do whatever you want to do. 30% give it to us, 70% is yours, do the project. And it's given to the managers. What's what's going on there? Do they care about the quality? So we would the like objective to is not there. Objective Sorry. is not there. We would like to know from you. You you mentioned that you had to do two times that project. So would you please tell us? What happened? Yeah, what happened? So we <laughs> learned from you. He you only told it. It vanished. <laughs> because two <laughs> things, the quality and the profit. So you please tell us. Tell, I'll tell yes. you. 
when, when we were working in Saudi Arabia, I came in 1980. And Mr. Smith and myself, I think you're also in 1980. At that time, you know, the method of doing the tendering was that there was a department who was doing the estimation. They, they calculated the price of the project as $100 million. It comes to the managing director to decide, and he says, change 100 million to 200 million and bid it. We bid it and we got it. <laughs> right? We were, no, we were normally working with US Army Corps of Engineers, and they were very good in maintaining the quality. They are uh, today what I know and what I have learned, I really learned from US Army Corps of Engineers. All of a sudden, we got a project which was not US Army Corps of Engineers, it was one of the ministry. In the ministry, there was no quality control, there was no quality assurance system as we were used to follow for our project and other projects. So it was something like a situation where the pressure was taken away from us. And everybody started doing the way they want to and everybody forgot what is quality. We had columns. The project manager decided that instead of curing, we will put the slicate, sodium slicate, for curing as a curing agent. And the curing compound came, which was expired. Even then, it was applied. So it made a glossy layer on it. The masons came, and they put the plaster on it. As a result, there was no bonding. They started debonding. So the whole project was debonding. Not a single room was square. Not a single toilet was a square. One time, I was taking a round of the project. I saw three, four guys. They were carrying the aluminum window, and they were moving from one house to another house. So I said, what are you doing? Why don't you fix it? So I said, sir, I'm trying to find out an opening which is right so then they can fix the window. So you can think of what was going on that project. Even then we completed it. And even then we did not lose. Because there was hundred million dollar profit available to us. But who lost? The company lost. And the company vanished. So the quality was the reason. Was the issue. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Uh, it's really very interactive session. But uh, Mr. Tarek is over. I think a uh, big round of applause for our speaker for a wonderful uh, presentation and uh, interactive session. So please have your seat now. I will request. Uh, I know we will move towards the second last part of the presentation. That is uh, the vote of thanks. There is a quote uh, by a diligent man in IEP fabric is engineer Rizwan Ahmad. He says, the imagination of engineers determine the need of human beings. And their vision brings reality to life. It gives me immense pleasure to call upon a man, we consider him a leader who knows the way, shows the way, and goes the way. <coughs> a highly professional electrical engineer by profession and he is the business development director of NABA International and our beloved chairman. Please join hands together to welcome engineer Rizwan Ahmad for a vote of thanks and mementos to our speaker. Thank you very much, uh, engineer Ahmad Rashan, uh, for conducting so nicely. Uh, thank you, Engineer Tariq bin Zafar. Uh, Engineer Shami has introduced him very well, and a long list of his accreditation. But believe me, his uh, biggest qualification to us is that he is our talented brother. <laughs> Thanks to 100 million profit that he is is still with us. <laughs> if this was not the case, he would have been gone with his MD and enjoying in Mari or Islamabad. 
Wherever. Uh, we have a tradition uh, to present the memento. So here is uh, uh, one engineer. Uh, we live in Jubel together, but believe me, we meet whenever there is a seminar here in Kobar Dama. So engineer Chaudhary Iqbal, please come and we would like honor to give this uh, shield to our distinguished speaker. Engineer Todi Iqbal is a pioneer engineer, developed in Layan Descon, then he moved to Tasni, and always quietly he comes and joins us from Jubail all the way. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. The size is double, the price is same. <laughs> <laughs> this, this size is for gurus. Guru, guru, guru. Yeah. 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 Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Tariq. Thank you, Jalsa, for all your supporting us all the way from Jumea. Uh, gentlemen, uh, before I go to words of thanks, I would like to apologize for the inconvenience maybe today you had because of the system and also the weight of uh, speaker. Uh, he has to put a lot of effort to raise his voice and because of this uh, system which we are trying to use first time, inshallah, we are going to develop this and next time when we have uh, our event, it will be better. And the reason for this is the new government regulation is not very easy to get permission in the hotel. It takes a lot of time. So that's why we chose this uh, location. And we are going to, inshallah, improve uh, with our health. Uh, this belongs to Dr. Nabil Breshi, who is a professor of KFU, Family Medicine. And he's running uh, since a long time. And he extended his uh, support to enhance and cooperate with us. On, on the other hand, our friend, Dr. Abdul Kalim Jabali, he is here. Uh, he is the chairman of the Jordanian Engineers. <laughs> we are planning to have the next session jointly done together. They are very active, and they are our dear brothers, inshallah, with their support. We are going to do another a big event in uh, coming uh, months. Uh, gentlemen, uh, we, we have some journals, the people who have not taken, I, I can see a lot of new faces here. This is very encouraging. Please don't be disappointed if you have any inconvenience. But to compensate this, I would like to tell you that we are recording and when Mr. Naeem, he gives us CD after 10 days, uh, you can get the, your copy uh, from any of the council members or uh, send us an email. We'll keep this for you, for your reference, so you can enjoy this, uh, this valuable presentation, inshallah. Uh, the new engineers who are here, we have uh, registration forms. You like to fill, please fill, give us. So in a uh, new journal, we can put into your, in, your, uh, in our database, uh, your details. Uh, we, we have, uh, where is, uh, we have lucky draw. If somebody has not uh, put his uh, business card, please, please do so, so you don't miss it. Yeah, it. Yeah. 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 This is not the second one. If anybody has missed, if he doesn't have, he can write and put the name in it. Uh, Dr. Jabali, can you help us to get the to get the lucky one? Uh, Thank you for the opportunity. Okay. Yeah. I will choose myself. <laughs> this is the one. Oh. This is from Janan Muhammad oh. Zubaydi. Zubaydi. 
Yes, I'll come there. This is not intended. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, okay. Okay, with this uh, we conclude our event. Uh, thank you very much, gentlemen, for sparing uh, this time. And we, we have given a trial that we did it on uh, Saturday. Some of the people are having uh, off days and some of them they don't. So it's still, I can see there's more than 12 people. They have traveled from Jubail. Thank you very much. And that's for the people who are spared also. We are grateful and looking forward to meet you in the next event. Thank you very much. Uh, refreshments are outside the canteen. Please, uh, let's have your tea, coffee.